Hello everyone, Creative Fun here, back again with another video. Finally, I am recording, making videos again. I have been quite busy the past couple of months and I haven't quite been able to record and edit some videos, but I'm back at it again. It uh, feels great. Uh, so let's get started. As most of you who watch my videos know, I do primarily DCS videos and obviously what we're looking at, at here is not DCS, it's x 11, obviously, again. And uh, I've been actually playing around with it uh, quite a lot the past couple of months. Uh, I've had a kind of a feeling or wanted to, to explore uh, civilian aircraft uh, flight simulators and eventually I settled upon x 11. There's a couple of civilian aircraft flight simulators out there and um, as I'm looking through them, um, the main ones yeah, I believe is Dovetail's Flight Sim World, you have x 11 of course and then you have a prepared version 4. Now many people point out there is also FSX but uh, while looking, doing my research FSX just seems to be really old actually. Uh, I'm, co I'm completely new to this uh, civilian aircraft flight simulator world so um, I'm, I just done a little bit of research, I wanted to get started and um, Checking out prepared seemed to be more geared towards actual people studying to become a pilot and finding an enthusiast or just a game license seemed to not exist. So I'm not quite sure how all the YouTubers managed to get a hold of prepared version 4 without uh, somehow tweaking the license agreements a little bit. Uh, those dovetails flight sim world wasn't all that interesting either. Uh, so eventually uh, the lot fell on x 11 uh, and I've been uh, running it. Uh, for the past two months here and enjoying it quite a lot actually. It, it's very different from DCS. So this video is going to be um, a little bit of rambling video. I'm going to talk a little bit about x 11 uh, from a DCS guy's perspective and if that's interesting to you stay tuned and listen to my opinions. Uh, if it it's not your cup of tea if you're not at all interested in flights, uh, civilian aircraft flight simulator or if you cannot just stand my voice for a couple of minutes uh, then uh, stay tuned I have some more cool a little bit more action-packed videos coming up but uh, just a warning this is going to be a series of a little bit of rambling videos an introduction to x 11 for people who are coming from either DCS maybe War Thunder or, or uh, just in general just interested in starting to get wanting to get started with uh, civilian aircraft flight simulators uh, and um, yeah, I just want to figure out what it is. So it's going to be a little bit of an introductionary video. I'm going to talk a lot um, and we're going to see if we cannot uh, do something interesting with it. So first up, just let me give you an introduction to x 11 and what's included in the stock, um, stock x 11. So that was a quick introduction to stock x 11. Um, there's not much more added than that. Uh, it's quite interesting, I do believe. I do believe that it has the best feature. <coughs> so this version of x 11 that I have installed now, uh, have a I have added a couple of uh, payware and one freeware aircraft as well, but let's just, okay, let's start it again. So let's just have a look at the standard x 11 interface. Now I tried to use x 11 many, many years ago on a Mac, I believe even, uh, and um, was not very impressive. Before it seemed to have a quite high threshold to get in a learning curve. Uh, the interface didn't seem very intuitive uh, from what I can do tell from my research. However, the new x 11 here has apparently had a huge upgrade in terms of user interface. So I figured I'll just take you through the user interface very quickly uh, when you start up and this, so you can get started very quickly with this. We're going to start from the bottom and move our way up here. Um, one quick button, <laughs> doesn't need an introduction. The settings is very interesting. If you go into settings, you have, well, pretty much what would you expect, but there's nothing here overly com complicated. Uh, you are able to set up multiple machines via network, so you can go pretty, pretty hardcore if you want to build your own uh, simulator, apparently. Uh, it's really, really cool and has a re really good in-depth uh, capabilities. However, for, for the average user, this is actually very easy for me. For anyone who is familiar with uh, DCS will be, get started quite quickly with this, I believe. 
So setting up the joysticks and stuff like that's very simple. For example, setting up the throttle, um, switching between your different types of input devices and setting them up and uh, binding the keys and everything like that. The same with the keyboard. Uh, you have very good search functionality here. So they're very intuitive, very easy. And you have the graphic settings here as well. And I actually read a long post, or I think maybe actually I watched a video where they talk about the graphic user interface because apparently it was a hell of a lot more complicated in X-Plane 10. But they kind of scaled it down uh, to the major factors that affects uh, FPS. And this is my current settings uh, in ultra wide uh, 1440p uh, with a 1080 uh, graphics card and an uh, old uh, 4790K CPU. And I get really good uh, frame rates between 30 and 60, which is what you can expect from a simulator. So this is really nice and you have the ability to set the uh, like screens and field of view, which is very important, especially if you're uh, playing with uh, some of the higher I'm um, actually going to change this right here. Uh, especially if you're playing with some of the higher uh, resolution screens and ultra wide screens, it's very nice to be able to set the field of view quickly. So, all in all, uh, very easy to get started in setting up X Plane 11. Moving up here, we have um, Flight School, uh, which initially I believe is uh, my first impression was this is very lacking. And um, there's basically a couple of simple tutorials to get you started if you're completely new to flight simming as a whole. You have a couple of um, tutorial lessons here, um, which I believe is sufficient if you're not used to flying at all, uh, including some navigation uh, stuff, working out how to fly in an ILS approach and VR navigation. If you're familiar, if you're a familiar DCS pilot, especially with the full fidelity aircraft like the Mirage or A10 or the Big N, this is going to be, you're not going to need this very much. This is a little bit uh, too simple. Uh, and you could very well just jump into an aircraft and start flying. You have load safe flight and this allows you to load either a uh, situation, like you could save like mid flight and then come back to it, or you could load a replay. And the replay functionality, I'm going to show this a bit later in a couple of other videos, but replay functionality in uh, x 11 is amazing. Uh, I really wish that uh, Eagle Dynamics would have a look at the replay functionality in x 11 and just get it to work like that in DCS because the replay functionality here is just stellar. It's like everything you could wish from a replay functionality, period. Let's have a look at the new flight here. Now I have a couple of payware aircrafts. Uh, let's see if maybe we can uh, sort them. No, do, 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 do. all studios, uh, laminar research, there we go. So um, here are the stock aircrafts for X-Plane 11. And I think it's quite a decent turnout of different types of aircraft, different types of functionality. You even have a helicopter and some military aircrafts as well. Uh, so regardless of what you want to fly, you will have um, a stock aircraft that will get you started. So you don't have to start purchasing or paying a lot of money for, for different other aircrafts. Now these aircrafts are okay-ish. They are like from, from beginner to intermediate level flight simulation. Um, in terms of system, modula uh, system modeling and uh, flight dynamics, they are intermediate, I would say, not, not nowhere near study level but can absolutely be immersive enough to give you a satisfying intermediate flight simulator experience. I have been flying mostly the MD-82 and uh, the Cessna Skyhawk, I believe. The Sirius Vision is quite nice too if you want, want to have a small aircraft you can get up and quickly fly around and get some, uh, just look at the scenery and so on. So, but mostly MD-82 and Cessna Skyhawk. Uh, I believe both the Boeing 747 and Boeing 737 are equally as uh, complete as the MD-82 in terms of system modeling uh, for both good and bad. Uh, so, so they're not completely accurate. And I'm actually going to uh, showcase this in the, the two following videos about the, the stock aircraft versus paver aircraft and paver scenery and so on. In addition to selecting your aircraft here, you can of course customize them. Uh, and they usually come with a bunch of different li libraries. If you go back to, let's see here, MD82 for example, there's actually quite a few libraries here. Uh, quite fun actually. 
do, do. I usually fly the SAS one because uh, that's what I <laughs> I actually flown on this uh, version quite a few times uh, when I was younger as a passenger of course. Uh, you're able to set weight and balance and fuel and stuff like that. I think that's pretty neat. And of course also system modeling in terms of failures. So you can check different types of failures and set certain um, failure conditions, which I think is pretty nice. Following that, you select basically which airport you want to start from. And there's a lot of airports here. You can see here there are thousands and thousands of airports. Um, you might notice that there are some couple of uh, features here, like some airports as they were 3D, others as grass strip, dirt strip. Some will have helipad, so you can take off from a helicopter with it. Uh, as you can see, the 3D indicates that the airport actually has a 3D model or some sort of 3D um, modeling or um, scenery, 3D scenery. And uh, as you notice, that's not quite a, there's very few that doesn't have it or very few that actually has the 3D um, tag here. So, and that was something that's kind of turned me off to explain uh, when I started trying it out. I want to fly from Bergen Airport, uh, uh, Flasland. I think it's, uh, if you use the ID, it's uh, e Echo November Bravo Romeo, maybe. Uh, anyway, so, and that was completely just flat. It's just a gray area. Uh, I tried to take off from Tbilisi, for example. Uh, for you, those of you who fly DCS will immediately recognize Tbilisi. But Batumi had a nice free airport, actually. Uh, Tbilisi only had the airstrips, not even any taxiways or anything like that, just the airstrips. Uh, so, it's can be a little bit hit and miss in terms of scenery, especially with the airports and how, how detailed they are. Uh, of course, the thing, there's a lot of uh, custom scenery you can download uh, for free, uh, community built uh, scenery, and there's uh, quite a few uh, very nice payware scenery as well. And I'm gonna showcase this, this in the coming videos. Uh, once you select your airport, you can also, let's, let's, let's select the Bergen airport here, Echo Number Bravo Romeo, and Bergen Lufthansa Flesland, and then you can customize it. And you have different gates you can take off from, very nice, and then you can select even special starts and it will give you like grass strip, dirt strip, carrier, uh, depending on what is capable uh, for the uh, airport. So that's quite nice, formation flying, no map available here. So you can see there's quite a few things you can do if you want to take off and which, uh, how you can do that. So that's really nice. So you can select where you want to start or which type of situation you want to start. Uh, let's uh, see here, do, 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 do. let's go back. Uh, what you can do after that is select the weather, click on customize and there's a lot of ways to uh, modify the weather and um, I generally just do the match real weather conditions because that's much more fun. And it, it stops me from, or rather it, it uh, doesn't require a lot of uh, work to set up and be nice. Otherwise you have to manually set up the different types of cloud layers and wind and stuff like that. And that's just, it takes time to set it up manually, just like it does in DCS. There's a little bit more uh, variety to it here and a little bit more capabilities in the weather engine. I actually use a custom weather, weather engine for my uh, fully maxed out X-Plane 11. I'm going to showcase that as well once time is right. We also have the time and you can set it to whatever you like or you can uh, set it up uh, to be the local time for the airport, the actual time for the airport you've selected. So that's quite nice too. And you can select whether you want to start with engines running or not. Now, some of these stock aircraft, or rather, I think all stock aircraft has a clickable cockpit with proper cold dark uh, startup sequences. They're not like completely study levels, so they're not uh, completely accurate startup sequence, especially with the MD82, for example, which is the one I've been flying a lot here. Um, so keep that in mind, though, you can actually start learning some procedures, and it's still quite immersive unless you're like a hardcore. Uh, uh, flight sim uh, uh, enthusiast that requires absolute study level perfection and these aircraft will give you a quite nice uh, intermediate immersive experience it's not too hard to get into uh, the big downside though uh, one thing I found really difficult 
or I really dislike this is that there's very little documentation. There's some manuals you can read, but there's not enough to get the aircraft started up. You're reliant on either pushing buttons by yourself or looking at a lot of YouTube tutorials. Uh, so bear that in mind, I could not find a lot of documentation for these aircraft. So you're, you're bound to do some Googling yourself and especially looking at YouTube and, and forum posts and see what people, how people start these aircrafts up or how they operate them. So that's basically a quick introduction to XP11 and what the XP11 uh, package includes out of the box in terms of aircrafts. So in the next video, uh, I uh, am going to show you how to get the most out of stock X-Plane 11 uh, in terms of planning a flight, uh, how you go about planning a flight and setting the flight up and then well, executing the flight. Uh, we're going to do a quick trip between the Bergen Airport, Flasland and uh, Norway's uh, main airport hub, uh, capital hub, uh, Oslo Gardermoen Airport. So uh, thank you so much for watching this little bit of rambling video, just showcasing like the user interface of x 11. And uh, next video will be a little bit more interesting with the actual flight and flight planning. And we're gonna continue uh, with a couple of other videos. I want to showcase um, like a maxed out version of x 11 where we have custom scenery, we have um, uh, payware weather engine, we have uh, re uh, realism plugins and stuff like that just to show you how a uh, fully custom up uh, X-Plane 11 experience can be. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check me out on Twitter uh, and I'll see you guys in the next video.